long weekend, long week, so I'm not gonna take up too much of your time, but I did promise today that I would touch on a brief overview in terms of what is Canada's mortgage ecosystem. And so this all started off yesterday when I attended uh, one of our regular team meetings for Verico Paragon Mortgage Group, which is the firm I'm part of. And there's way over 100 of us throughout Western Canada taking care of countless clients and collectively as a team we generated way over a billion dollars in mortgages in 2017. And at the end of this meeting yesterday, one of our broker owners, Steve Rogerson, hello Steve, said uh, our, our number one lender so far in 2018 that we've done the most business with in terms of pairing them with our clients is, drum roll, Scotiabank. We're just like, eh, no big surprise. And he said, who was our number two lender? And we said, eh, TD, of course. And he said, no. And we're just like, hmm, really? Not TD Bank. How about credit union? The credit union? He's like, nope. The number two lender that we're doing business with so far in 2018 is actually, it actually started out so small that we actually made it a group of lenders because it was just such a small sliver in the pie chart of lenders with which we pair our clients. And those are the private mortgage lenders. And to me, that was astounding because it's so telling as to what is happening out there in the mortgage landscape in Canada in terms of all these new rules and borrower profiles in our country and so on. And just to make the point, just to use a round figure here, that for every dollar of business that we have done as a firm so far this year with Scotiabank, we have done more than 35 cents with private mortgage lenders. And so, wow. Let me just start off today by just giving you my definition of what I think are the three species of mortgage lenders in Canada. Traditional, alternative, private. And I'm just gonna rattle off names today. Traditional, I would say there's two subspecies. You've got your chartered banks, federally regulated. So your BMOs, your RBCs, your CIBCs, your TDs and Scotias and whoever else I missed. Then you've got your monoline lenders who are sort of the big brand names in Canada that are just mortgage only companies. MCAP, First National, Street, those types of names that a lot of my clients and a lot of my other friends' clients are familiar with. We then get into the alternative mortgage space and that sort of starts with the credit unions which are provincially regulated and they make local credit decisions and you know all these names, Coast Capital, Blue Shore, Envision, Prospera, GVCCU, Westminster, whoever else I may have missed just because I'm going off the cuff here. Then you get into these divisions of, of, uh, of banks that are actually running alternative mortgages like divisions of Canadian Western Bank, like Optimum, or, or uh, divisions of um, uh, Laurentian Bank, or People's Trust and other trust companies, or the alternative desks of credit unions. Those are the alternative lenders, just to name a few. Then we get into the private lender species, and there are tons and tons of these lenders, and there are different iterations of them. But just to name a couple of names today, you've heard their jingles on the radio, and you've seen them on TV, and you've seen them uh, on, on the boards of hockey rinks, Alpine Credits, and Capital Direct. <whistles> you know, right? So just, that's just sort of an overview today of who's who in the zoo. I mean, there, there's, there's others that I've, I'm sure that I've missed, but I just wanted to sort of paint the picture of the three main species of mortgage lenders in Canada. And in the coming days, I'm gonna sort of describe the characteristics of each species and how they may fit with you or, and your clients when it comes time to buying or refinancing a home today. That's it for now. Have a great weekend. Happy hunting for a home, and I'll talk to you soon.